bowl season is here. Are you ready to cash in on what you know? Where you play is as important as what you play. The pros play at mybookie.ag. All the lines, odds, and plays, both college and pro, all at mybookie.ag. Play where you get paid super fast, and there's never a hassle. Step up, and mybookie.ag will match your deposit with up to a 50% bonus. Use promo code JJ50 to activate the offer. Don't leave the money on the table. MyBookie.ag, promo code JJ50, and your first deposit is matched up to 50%. Play where the pros play, because they get paid. MyBookie.ag. And now, Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN Radio. When I pop the trunk, head the dead. Y'all pop the trunk, I pop the hood. Now act stupid, I'll pop the trunk. Now <laughs> give me your po 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 I'm David Jacoby, in for Jalen Rose, repeat guest here at Jalen Jacoby, Anita Marks. How are you, Anita? I'm great. And I have to say, like, every time I'm on your show, all my friends and people in the industry are like, God, they love you. I'm like, we say nice things about you. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, they, they actually, like, they really, really like me. Really? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We, we, and I'm really and glad so that I you're here. I love that I'm here today. I'm really glad that you're here. One of the things that you cover heavily of the New York football giants. Ugh, and guess what? There's brutal. some giants news to start with. I know. This is never a good sign when the owner of the team says something like this. We have John Mara and Steve Tisch saying, quote, Ben McAdoo is our head coach and has our support. Yeah, I, I think that's what they have to say. Um, because you know what? Listen, it is the giant way. Um, Willington Mara, John Mara's father. I mean, this is this is the way that the organization operates. And this is, and, and yeah. with all with all due respect, I mean, in, in honesty, this is why they have so much respect in in mm. and around the NFL is because this is how they operate. Um, and so I get it. Now I do believe that there will be changes made at the end of the season. No, you don't think McAdoo is going to be the head coach next year? Come on. What? Come on. Do you think they how should can consider? Anyone, uh, come on. How can anyone survive this? In all and and I and le- I, I said this on Sports Nation. It, it I hate talking about people get losing their jobs. Sure. It's the worst thing to talk about because sure. it's not just Ben McAdoo. It's an entire coaching staff. Yeah. So I hate to talk about it, but I don't know how someone survives what has happened here. And and also. Uh, I don't believe this is the wisest decision. I think based on what's happening in that locker room, there's so much, it's such dysfunction happening. Uh, the New York media is, I, I mean, they are. Th- there is blood in the water and there mm-hmm. are sharks in that locker room right now. And all they want to talk about is the players that are turning on Ben McAdoo. That's the topic. How can a team seriously concentrate and prepare for an opponent each and every week when the topic of discussion is, how much this org- the, the, the team in the locker room has turned on their coach. And you've got Ben McAdoo, who's calling it fake news. Well, you've got Josina Anderson, who every day is getting text messages from players in that locker room who are telling it's her real news. It's, it's real news. So here's the question. is we, we are in agreement that he will not be the head coach next season. Right. Right. So is there should there be some consideration to perhaps, I know it's not the giant way, mm-hmm. but just saying, you know what? We're going to we're going to have this interim head coach now, and Ben McAdoo is no Spag- longer the head coach. Uh, Spagnola, who who really, in yep. my opinion, Spags, he should come in. He's the defensive coordinator right now. He's been a head coach before with the Rams. We've yeah. seen him be the head coach for the Rams before. Um, I, I really think that a changing of the guard needs to happen now, and not to say that Spags should be the head coach moving forward. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, who knows? Maybe they send the Saints a draft pick for Sean Payton. Sean Payton, what? part of that Giants family. Again, this ooh, is ooh, talk to me. Yeah, I, I mean, like this. this. Is, I'm just this is what the Giants like to do. They they like to keep it in house. Jason Garrett, at one point in time, keep in mind, was a part of the Giants organization. Sean Payton. I'm really big on Josh McDaniels, but I think Josh McDaniels is waiting for Bill Belichick and Tom Brady to ride off in the sunset with their six or seven Super Bowls, whatever. At the end of the day, that they win, yeah. and I think he knows he's the next heir apparent. But I think that's a guy that the Giants should should consider going after. But um, but it's just it's so bad, it's so toxic, it's so ugly, and I don't see it getting better unless Ben leaves. And well, so it's that's. That's why. That's why I. But I'm saying right now it needs to change. Look, look they've got Philadelphia coming up. They, they, this was they lost to the San Francisco, an 0 and 9 San Francisco 49ers. The schedule gets more difficult. It's gonna get. It's gonna get uglier Let's as the say season John progresses. John and Steve are hanging out. And they say, you know what? I don't know what to do about this. I'm going to call Anita. Let's get on the phone with what? Anita. Let's conference call Anita. She's, a, she's around. She knows a lot. Mm-hmm. Let's out. get her on the phone and let's ask her what we should do. Should we fire him midway through the season? And what would I say? Yeah. yeah. I'd say, listen, that locker room is toxic right now. Uh, you've, you've, got, you've got players that are reaching out to, to media 
anonymously and and telling telling that media person who of course is reporting Josie Anderson on on ESPN how it is and and so and now what's happened is now there's divide in the locker room because now you've got you got Landon Collins and Jonathan Casillas and Snacks Harrison who are angry and upset of these anonymous uh, anonymous players that are 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 communicating this so now there's dissension in the locker room and again winning winning is the best deodorant there is no, it's, there's Tom's deodorant in there right now. And, that, and it doesn't work. <laughs> Tom's Tom's does not doesn't, we all know Tom's deodorant Tom's doesn't work. Tom's deodorant doesn't work. It, it, Unless it, they sponsor this show. Oh, and they don't. <laughs> right? No, they don't. Okay, no, thank no, you. No, no, no. So I, I just, I just, I, it's, it's going to get worse because this team is going to continue to lose. So I just, I think it's it's the best interest of this organization. What's going on in that locker room to move on from, from Ben right now? And there's, there's also yeah. some news about Roger Goodell's extension. Now, this has been talked about in the last few days, and you know Jerry Jones gets involved. Now the NFL Compensation Committee is, has said, Jerry, enough is enough. Like, we'll leave, leave yourself out of this. And reportedly, Goodell asked for the following. I love this so this much. This is so great. $49.5 million <laughs> a year. That's American dollars, $49.5 million a year. A that's only, by, by the way, by the way, it's only nine million more than he's made. You know, he's he's, yeah. oh, he's like he's averaging he forty million. Bump. Everybody wants so a bump. I mean, like understand where this what, is my what favorite the, part, what, the, what the bump up is. It's, he we're wants health care for his family for right? life well, don't forever. We all, don't we all? Sure, love that. Just okay. get that security and a lifetime private plane. Right. Soft move or boss move? Making this sort of request amidst boss, this boss environment. When I negotiate with ESPN, I'm scared Definitely to ask for first yeah. I'm scared to ask for first class. <laughs> I I'm love wor- playing for life. Like, this ridiculous I'm, request. I'm worried I'm not going to get an, an ESPN extension if I request first <laughs> so, class. This yeah. dude's asking Coach for is fine. Coach his, is fine. His, his, his own, own middle plane. Seat, be fine. Get the um, exit row. You're all right. You know, I mean, I think it's I, I think it's it's comical for us and it's funny for us because, you know, we're just we're the average Joe Schmoes. Sure. This is a totally different lifestyle. I mean, this is a totally, obviously, a totally different pay grade. A to- like access and the availability to anything and everything in the world. Um, so, but listen, I give him credit. Look, it's a boss move. He also when sees you negotiate, the numbers. When, you when you're negotiate, the commissioner, you see the numbers. You're like, we are making billions of dollars here of profit. So I just want my piece. I just, uh, to be honest, I just want to be his agent. I mean, like, I like it. I like, like the plane for life. Ten percent. When it got when it got later in the negotiation, I'd be like, I also want my own logo on the plane. I want a decal, and I want to pick my pilot. I, I think the big. Th- I mean, I mean, we're, we're having fun in regard to like what monetarily he's he's making, but I, I think the the big issue here is. You know, you, you've messed up on so many uh, domestic violence in the NFL. Um, a number of things that in his Every tenure have gone wrong, yeah, and course. then now you're coming in like with like a boss move and, and negotiating. John's is involved. It's, it's not. It's not like things Rays, are going great. When things are, are going down. great. You can ask for this sort of a thing. Exactly. But when, when the very foundation of the business, which is television ratings, are going down, ratings it's are hard down. for your salary and compensation to go up. The whole national anthem issue, a big reason why. Listen, I, I, I play golf a lot in the summer mm-hmm. and I'd say 60 to 70 percent of the guys that I play golf with have all said to me I'm not watching I'm not I love the NFL I'm not watching why because they they, they find the whole uh, anthem issue very anti-patriotic and it's it's been a turnoff and so ratings all these things all these negatives that have happened under his tenure and he wants his own plane what? we celebrate women every week every Wednesday it. we have a special episode just for women really women crush Wednesday we call hmm. it so maybe, we I, sh- maybe I should do. fly out to LA every Wednesday yeah. Every single Wednesday, you can fly out on your own dime and volunteer your time here on Jalen and Jacoby. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Love what you did that there. That changed. Thank you. Um, I want to talk to you about the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. How about them Cowgirls? Uh, how about them? Well, everything was going pretty good. You know, won three games in mm-hmm. a row. Mm-hmm. And then uh, they gave up six sacks to one human being on Sunday and got waxed by the Falcons. Do you think they will make the playoffs? What is happening now? No, I do not think they will make the playoffs. I mean, first and foremost, obviously the biggest news is is Ezekiel Elliott, right? So, of course. Um, he tried to he fought that battle and he won and then he failed and then yeah. he won and then he failed and so now a new hearing is set for December first. But everything I'm hearing is it's going to be six games. So he's not yeah. coming back until they take on Seattle. Yeah. So, it, but it's evident based on what we saw in this Atlanta game that a they're not committed to a run the, the run at all without Ezekiel mm-hmm. there. Okay, you've got Alfred Morris. We saw what he was able to do in Washington. Rod Smith, um, McFadden. But Who, do you, I think McFadden got one snap. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but this, this is actually the first game I think I want to say that he was even he was, yes, he he was, was active. A- active yeah, yeah. He's uh, and not, I call it active and not attractive. So, um, <laughs> so 
I like, I like a little sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cute. Does. Yeah, it's really it's cute. Part of the show. So, um, so, it, so first and foremost, it's it's evident that this is a Dallas Cowboys team. They're not committed to the run. Number two, their offensive line obviously not 100 percent, not healthy, mm-hmm. as you said. Um, Smith was out. Green was in. Gave up six sacks to one yeah. uh, Claiborne, Adrian Claiborne, Adrian yeah. Claiborne for the Atlanta Falcons. So, but it's not on. All on the offensive line. The coaching staff needed to make adjustments. Jason Garrett, Scott Linehan, they needed to make adjustments, and they didn't. If that's happening, you go in there at the half and you say, okay, guys, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go jumbo package. Let's put an extra offensive lineman on the line. Put let's move in there. We'll let's, help with the running back. Anything. Let's, yes, let's move, the, let's move the tight end over so that he can at least help chip. How about you keep a running back back in the backfield for max protect, extra help out of the backfield? None of that happened. Mm-hmm. So you've got to put it on the coaching staff. Um, on top of that... Like I just, I just, I'm not a big fan of Des Bryant. I haven't been for the past two years. Well, I mean, here's Dak Prescott apparently because he doesn't throw the ball his way too much. Well, here's the no. thing: I, I spoke to a, a number of coaches um, and players, and and it, here's the difference: Tony Romo would force the ball to Des Bryant, Ooh. and Des Bryant, what his what what his wheelhouse is is I'm big I'm strong throw the ball to me I'm gonna go up I'm gonna fight for it and gosh darn it I'm gonna catch the ball for you yes Dak Prescott doesn't do that Dak Prescott throws the ball to open, open guys receiver. yeah, open yeah, receivers yeah, yeah. Dak Prescott is not gonna force the ball so 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 this you have a quarterback who's not playing a wide receiver's strong suit or his game on top of that with all due respect he's old Father time has caught up with him. Injuries. He's got like nine, 12 screws in his foot. He's dealing with a knee issue now. He's, he doesn't run great routes. He's not fast. And he drops a lot of balls. I go back to the heyday when the Dallas Cowboys were winning Super Bowls. And you had that trifecta, right? Mm-hmm. Emmett Smith, um, Irving, Michael Irving, yep. and Troy Aikman. I, I won't use the word shock, but I'm a little surprised. I thought the Dallas Cowboys would try to trade Des Bryant. Ooh. And 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 focus in on next year going out and bringing in a real stud wide receiver and 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 create that trifecta that was so successful during their heyday. So I I think I think a big reason why they're, they're struggling as well is 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 Des and they lost their field goal kicker. Dan Bailey is one of the best field goal Good kickers point. in the NFL. And when you have a field goal kicker who's like money from 50, 55, 58 out. It gives your offense such confidence. Just get us to the thirty-five yeah. yard line. Can like, you get you us know, to the thirty-five. Don't forget the red yeah. zone. Get us to the thirty-five. And you and it's like yeah. automatic three points. And and so when you lose, you lose that confidence. You lose the confidence in running the football because you don't have Ezekiel Elliott. Your coaching Sean staff. Lee. Your coaching staff, and that's another thing, Sean Lee. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sean Lee is one of the underestimated, uh, undervalued. De- I don't think people realize how awesome Sean Lee is as a player. As soon as Sean Lee went out, Matt Ryan, he took advantage of the matchup. Yep. I was telling people in fantasy, you know me with fantasy. I'm a fantasy nut. Um, I was telling people, do not play Austin Hooper because I, th- that matchup with Sean Lee, he wasn't gonna he wasn't gonna put up a point for you. What happened? As soon as as soon as Sean Lee went out, like I want to say, like a few minutes into the first quarter with the hamstring issue. Uh, he just got targeted. I want to say six receptions, almost I want to say 50, 55 yards, and he scored a touchdown because Matt Ryan is a smart quarterback and that's what he did. So with, with all those with all those reasons we just sat here for five minutes and talking about, um, you've got the Seattle Seahawks, you've got the Minnesota Vikings, yes. you've got better teams that are going to be competing to try to get in as a wild card. So unfortunately, they're not going to win the division. The Philadelphia Eagles no. are just Unbelievable! I mean, probably one of the best stories this year in in the NFL. I, I just—they're not going to win the division, and I don't think they get in as a wild card. Can you explain to me this Martellus Bennett situation? Just to, I, I've read all the stuff and mm-hmm. I understand it, but I want to hear you <laughs> explain it to me and our audience exactly what happened with him. So, 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 it's it's really interesting. So every team has their own medical staff, mm-hmm. right? And some medical staffs are 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 more lenient than others, right? Like like the Giants are known to have the most um, conservative medical staff, where like if there's a, like an inkling of any kind of injury. They will tell the, the owners, you cannot play this player, and there's no negotiating. There's no talking them out of it, right? And there's other teams out there that are like, well, you know, his ligament Old does feel loose. Yeah, his, his ligament yeah. does feel loose. Maybe if, you know, we give him some therapy we'll and he it wraps up. it, yeah. uh, yeah. you know, yeah. put, yeah. Some, yeah. put yeah. some tussin on it, put yeah, some exactly. rubber tussin, we'll rubber tussin on it. wrap it but with, yeah. some, with some ace bandage, put, it'll be get fine. Get him out there, you know, like little Chris Rock. Um, anyway, so. Our audience understands so, the so, 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 all, so yeah. all teams have a different kind of. Of like mentality or philosophy when it comes to their medical staff. I would imagine that the Patriots medical staff is pretty serious. So he, 
Oh, and 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 the Green Bay Packers, I would as well. So this is what I think happened. I think, I think Bennett, aka the Black Unicorn. You know he calls himself that, right? Uh, I, I do know. Okay, that. all right. So so he so he goes to the Green Bay Packers. He's got Aaron Rodgers, unbelievable wide receiving, of course, oh, yeah. like solid rushing attack contender. with Ty Montgomery, right? And 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 um, Aaron Jones is back there, and and Jamal Williams. Anyway. Man, Super Bowl contender. Mm-hmm. He's excited. This is. I think this is his last year playing. Oh boy, I won a Super Bowl with the, with the Patriots. Now, what if I go? I win a Super Bowl with the Green Bay Packers. Life is good. How's that working out for you? Not very well. Aaron Rodgers no. is is out. Um, Hundley is, is, is nowhere mess. close to Aaron Rodgers. And, and I think the writing was on the wall. And so a lot of times when guys kind of know what's happening Shoulder and they have no more. shot of winning, ow, my ear hurts. Ow, my toe hurts. And so they'll go to the medical staff, and the medical staff, maybe they don't find anything. But what are you going to do? Tell the player that he's lying? You can't do that. So I, I, I and, and I don't know anything. This is this is my opinion. This is my, what I think happens is that Martella, that I just think he was just like, you know what? I'm done. Like, this is my last year. I don't want to go out there and play and, like, injure myself even more. I'm, I'm not saying he doesn't have an injury. Maybe his shoulder is a little beat up. But is it, is it as bad as, as he was saying, obviously not. You saw him just played. go out and play yeah, for the Patriots. 38 so, yards receiving, so he six get, targets. So he gets cut. Patriots, like they always do, pick him up. They sure. bring him in. And, and I mean, not like, you know, he didn't woo the world no. last night. You know, but... Um, they used him. But they used him. And he and, got and tackled. Let me t- and he caught balls. And let me tell you, they're, they're going to continue to use him. And he and, and if, if this Patriots team continues to roll. And, and their defense gets each and week, each and every week, their defense has gotten better and better and better. Mm-hmm. Um, he's going to be a big part of that offense once they get into the postseason. So, again, it's just like the rich get richer. The Patriots continue to get better. It's it's unbelievable. It's, it's like one of the facts in life. So, you are... Our favorite fantasy guru here, Jalen and Jacoby. Thank you. You're in 70,000 leagues. 12. And I'm not going to let you leave without giving our listeners, not people like me that aren't in the hunt anymore. You know what I mean? Really? Are you done? I mean, I'm never done. I'm going to keep fighting. What's your record? Three and five? Oh, you're done. Whatever. I got like three wins. Yeah. Yeah, So imagine if one of our listeners, some of our listeners, are (sighs) are they're in the hunt. Right. You know, second, third, fourth place in their league. They're still in it. What is you give me like two solid actionable pieces of advice for people that are still in the hunt in their fantasy? Well, I I, th- I think I think what you need to do is you need to start looking at, at matchups and uh, and I want to say two weeks ago I, I looked back and I, I looked at matchups and quarterback wise, uh, Derek Carr and Tyrod Taylor have unbelievable matchups in week twelve through six uh, fourteen through Ooh, sixteen okay. week week fourteen through sixteen and that's where your play your playoffs start fourteen fifteen your championship typically is week sixteen so I. Try to trade for I because Tyrod Taylor at one point in time you were able to pick him up off the waiver wire. Not anymore. Um, And 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 I'm not looking at at uh, this past game against the Saints. The Saints defense is just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. They're so much better than what most people what what we we've come to expect with the Saints. Right, especially from the Saints. Uh, Unbelievable. So, but but Tyrod Taylor and Derek Carr these are two quarterbacks that you want to try to trade for. Trade deadlines right around the corner, by the way. So you need to be uh, you you need to run, not walk. You need to be active and attractive and try to go out there and try to trade as quickly as possible and go get these guys. Um, there's a number of wide receivers. Like, for example, Alan Hearns just went down for the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars have a receiver called Didi Westbrook. This guy's unbelievable. Nice. I have a feeling that he hasn't been active yet this season. I have I have a feeling that he's going to be active. Now that if Alan, Hearns, if Alan Hearns is done for the season, I have a feeling he's going to come in. Like, And I'm talking about guys who are like, if you're in a 14, 16-man league and you're desperate. I mean, I'm talking like desperate. Sure. Um, D.D. Westbrook was a guy you want to keep an eye on. I'd, I'd pick him up this week in fantasy. Again, the Jacksonville Jaguars, very favorable schedule moving forward, especially for wide receivers. Um, and also, t- keep an eye on Curtis Samuel with the trade with Kelvin Benjamin going to the Buffalo Bills. Right. Each and every week, Curtis Samuel is getting more and more targets. We're going to see him play tonight, Monday Night Football, for the Carolina Panthers. Westbrook, he's, shout out. He's na- Samuel, right. trade for Taylor. Trade for, for Derek Carr and Derek Tyrod Carter. Taylor. Three very actionable pieces of advice from our favorite fantasy guru, Anita Marks. There you go. Shout out to Matthew Berry. He's on another level. Shout out. Listen, I just want to say thank you so much for coming by and being on Jalen and Jacoby. And I also want to say, next time you're in town, come golf with me. You know what I mean? We'll get, we'll get your, a new perspective. Uh, your, we'll get your, a new perspective. What's your handicap? I'm a terrible golfer, but uh-huh. my handicap is like seven beers around. Okay. 
bowl season is here. Are you ready to cash in on what you know? Where you play is as important as what you play. The pros play at mybookie.ag. All the lines, odds, and plays, both college and pro, all at mybookie.ag. Play where you get paid super fast, and there's never a hassle. Step up, and mybookie.ag will match your deposit with up to a 50% bonus. Use promo code JJ50 to activate the offer. Don't leave the money on the table. MyBookie.ag, promo code JJ50, and your first deposit is matched up to 50%. Play where the pros play, because they get paid. MyBookie.ag. Thank Anita Marks for coming by. Right now, we have Ramona Shelburne. Swapping one blonde for another, yes, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> Ramona, do you remember the Celtics when they were 0-2? And they lost Gordon Hayward. Yeah, and it was so sad. And it was just so sad. And I felt bad for sad Brad Stevens there <laughs> on the sideline. Well, now they are winning and winning and winning mm-hmm. and winning and winning. 12 straight. They've won the last two games without Kyrie Irving and Gordon Hayward. How do you make sense of this? How long do you think it will continue? I think it will continue until Thursday when they lose to the Warriors. But for mm. right now, it's a really nice story. It is. It is. We'll <laughs> enjoy it for half of a week. Yeah. For half yep. of a week. Because I think like Golden State is going to go in there and say, okay, we're still the Warriors. Yep. I know we lost a few games earlier. They dial up and down at will. I've noticed yeah. that about Golden that team. Golden State's they like the C student who has like, who can yes. get like the A on any test yes. they want. Oh, they like, study. How did you get 1,500 on the SATs? Yes. And you, yeah, exactly. That's Golden State. So they, like, they'll go in there. It's Boston. They want to assert that they can beat anybody, any place. And like, mm-hmm. it gets it gets their attention. They'll be motivated. I think, and they match up well. Um, one of the things the Celtics have been doing this year, I think, is it's just defensively. Like yeah. they've got all these young dudes who are really long, which is something Brown, we've heard Tatum. before yeah, with yeah. the Warriors, right? Like they're one of those teams that like everybody now is derivative of the Warriors. Like you're looking at how to beat Golden State. So when when the Warriors stand arm to arm, they're really long and nobody can get through. And so everybody looks at that and says, okay, we need guys like that too. And you got yeah. young guys like with Rozier and Jalen Brown and Jason Tate. Like they're, they're stepping up defensively, which is how you can win without your stars when they go down. Mm-hmm. Do you, would you consider them to be the favorite to come out of the East? No. Nope. Me neither. I'm still going with the Cavs. I'm still there. I am so not concerned about the Cavs. <laughs> I know. Me neither. Like, I want to, like, sound the alarm bells and all that. Like, I can make a case. I can I can play that part and say they're the oldest team in the league. The I can say, the like, why. you know, they don't have the same team around them. They, Isaiah Thomas is not if he does if he comes back, like, maybe he's not the same guy. How much can you count on him? LeBron needs another playmaker alongside of him. If Isaiah is there, I could, I could do that. I could get you all riled up. I could, I could make the Cavs are doomed case. But I I don't believe it. We all know <laughs> Leangelo Ball and a gentleman named Jalen. Okay. And Cody Riley were in China. They stole some Did you Louis just... Vuitton sunglasses. Right. I have a lot of questions about this, but we, we'll, we'll table that for a second. Was it okay. one pair? Was it three pairs? They're going to share the pair? How does this all I work? I think there were other stores too. Like from oh, the latest great. Arash Markazi reporting, was that there were three different stores oh. and there was like multiple things oh, it was going on. Yeah, like oh, footage of them. It's coordinated. And, and okay, and we all have to say allegedly. Okay, we have to do that every time we do that. So of that's course. the journalistic check here. But there's a reason why they're still under house arrest well, there and the team is home. Yeah. You mentioned Arash. <laughs> He's also reporting mm-hmm. that while in China, yep. the president of the United States yep. pulled the president of China to the side. Put his arm around him. And was just like, hey, man, uh, can you help me out with this ball thing? I'm a big fan of the big baller brand. Uh, you know what? If this ends up with Donald Trump and LeVar Ball at a press conference, I'm we done. We need that. I'm done. We need that. <laughs> I'm, do we need that? I think we do. I don't I think do, we need that. I need that. I Who, need can that. Can Dennis Robin be there? Can we get Dennis uh, Robin involved? Well, there is North Korea involved, right? Like there's yeah that could have like Dennis Rodman could be there brokering nuclear treaties with and North then Korea. yeah Trump could be there brokering <laughs> Leangelo Ball yeah I, look, somehow here's what you know I have you been to China. Yes. Okay. And you understand how much of what's going on here is about respect, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it looks from the footage, from what we've been reading, even though this is all an allegation at this point, they haven't been charged, It's it looks like they did it, okay? So it looks like there's footage of them stealing stuff from Chinese stores. And it's, and this We're is stuff on that, it late at night. We can say they did it. We can say that. Yeah, okay. they did it. So they, they're, that's disrespectful. In that culture, that is very disrespectful. To come into yeah. somebody else's country and in their store and take things that you don't need. 
Okay, take mm. them for the sake of taking them. And point. a lot of people in China are already sensitive to this. I've made a few calls on it and find out what's really going on. And I, I think a lot of this is just political. Like they, they're probably going to get out and they're probably going to go home. Yes. And the question is, is you see, are they going to suspend them? Yeah, I love that they could face up to ten years. Like they're not going to do ten years in yes, jail, no. but they're going to have ten years in jail threatened to yes. them, and they're going to be told how yeah. serious this is. But eventually, they will be playing yeah. basketball for. But uh, you know, I think people in China have this sense of one, they're being treated by different rules than than a regular Chinese citizen who did something like this. They'd mm-hmm. already be in jail. Yeah, okay? Sure. Um, and I, and th- that has to be massage, right? But they need to, like, LeVar saying the first day, I think Arash got him on camera saying it's not a big deal. Yeah. That did not go over very well. I bet. Um, and I think a lot, this is really all about respect. And so if there's a way to massage this and make the messaging work for China and the Chinese authorities, they'll be home. If there isn't, mm, it might be their minute. Yeah. Well, Urban Magic John Johnson was on Mike and Mike, <laughs> mm. and uh, he was talking about the other ball brother, you know, okay. the one that actually plays in the NBA, yeah. and here's what he had to say. We're not going to mess with it. We're going to let him shoot and play his game, and after the season he's not shooting well, then we'll sit down with him and say, hey, you know, let's maybe look at a different way or let's try to improve the way you are shooting. What, what is it that caused you not to shoot well? Is it your balance? Is it the fact that you didn't release it well? We can break it down with him. But we don't want to mess with his shot. He's, you know, he's proven that he's knocked that shot down, and we want him to encourage him to keep shooting. I love Magic saying, "We don't know what it is about your shot that's not working." I How can't imagine the, like, what it's, weird... it might be the fact that you shoot it from the other side of your body next <laughs> yeah. to your face. Yeah, but so, we don't know. We don't know. I'm super well versed in the like history of this like Lonzo Ball shot. Okay, and okay, I know too to much me. about this. Talk all right? to me. Part of the reason he started shooting like that is that Lavar Ball had him play up. So he would be like 11 and he'd play against 15 year olds, 16 mm. year olds, and they were all taller than him. So, in him. order to get around and over them, like they're not all tall like you, Jacoby, right? Mm. Like he was a little, little Lonzo at that point. He just developed this weird shot, right? He just kind of, it was just an, an adaptation, an evolutionary adaptation, sure. right? Sure, and get Darwin on. They it. go in. And so then, you know, he's always said, I, I don't need to change the shot if it's going in. But if it's not going in, I'll think about changing the shot. And it was like he said that in his draft interviews. He said that to the Lakers. But when the Lakers, remember they had two workouts with him. And the first workout he came in was not all that impressive. I don't yeah, think do he'd really been training all that much. Like he'd been training, but not like game shape, right? And I think he was sick or, you know, whatever. We all heard those stories afterwards. Yeah. So the Lakers had another workout with him, and he went through and he met at Magic and, and Rob Palenka, went out to Chino Hills. They did it on Lonzo's turf. And I talked to somebody real close to Magic, and they said, Irvin just needs to watch the guy shoot and see if. It goes in. I mean, you remember Magic had a weird shot too. Well, not like that. Okay, not like that. But not yes, like he that. did. It was a but traditional form. But he's seen strange form. shots sure. before. As okay? did Larry Bird, one, did, of one of the best shooters of all time. One of the best shooters of all time. Okay, but his yeah. was way up here. But like, it, 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 he needed to look at it for himself and say, "Can he get that shot off in the NBA?" And the and after he saw him the second time, he felt confident that he could get it off in the NBA. A re, you know, it's a strange shot, mm-hmm. but the guy's six six. I mean, by the way, Ben Simmons has a weird shot too. Like, uh, you he know, shoots with the wrong hand. Correct yeah. and. And a lot of people were like, I don't know if that guy can even shoot in the NBA when he, he gets there. He can shoot in the NBA, but he doesn't. But look how good he is yeah, anyway. Exactly. He does okay? everything else. And he does everything else, and he's yeah. really aggressive, and he's 6'10". So Lonzo being 6'6 really helps. And I think they feel that if he's just aggressive and he goes to the hoop and he can hit that little floater in the mid-range game, like they can live with him having that funky shot. And eventually, once he starts getting a little confidence closer to the rim, he'll be better on the outside well, What I heard was, we're going to completely change it this summer. We're going to let him have his rookie year with this That's bad probably shot. True. That's kind yeah, of what I heard. When I was happen. listening to that, I'm like, my God. Yeah. Ramona, when they relax the NFL celebration yeah. rule, I was really excited for this. And I have to say, Me I've too. been very disappointed this season. There has been very few noteworthy or even semi-entertaining celebrations in the National Football League. And then we were outdone by the Canadians in the CFL. Take a look at this. They're playing like limbo this. with a human being after touchdown. You should get extra points. Do you get extra points for that? I Do think you, that was really good. You should definitely get extra points for that. Do you think that I, we've been out celebrated by the Canadians? I like what the Chiefs did. Yeah. Remember, like the beanbag race, the, the potato sack yeah, potato race. Sack race or whatever. It was pretty All good. Right. But that was that was solid. Like you have to do I that quickly. That. You know? I enjoyed that. You can't just like get into the limbo thing and like they practiced that. I also had high hopes for the uh, Los Angeles Clippers this year. You did? Yeah, I did. I did. Why, they won just to go the other way, Zig, when others were zagging, fun, or what? They, they won four straight oh, yeah, to start the season. That. They do that in the beginning Things of the year. Things were going yeah. good. And okay. now they are absolutely terrible. 
what is happening hurt, okay? with so the like, Clippers? Patrick Beverly's hurt, Tito Sitch hurt, Gallo's mm-hmm. been a little hurt. And like when you don't, they don't have any margin for error with those guys. Plus, no. all those dudes like got traded is in the sort of grab bag trade, right? Like here's how we're gonna make all the salaries match, and like it's hard to build something when you have guys who just got here, weren't signed here, maybe you're under contract for a year. Like, it's just hard to go in the same direction. Yeah. Well, it's easy to go in the right direction in New York City because all New Yorkers know the easiest way to get around is the subway That's system. That's correct. Don't get in a cab. Never. Don't get an Uber. It's never going to work out for you. And you know who's, who else learned this? The Cleveland Cavaliers. They were told that it was going to be a 45-minute bus yeah. ride or a six-minute train ride. Wow. First of all, no train ride is six minutes, no. but whatever. Yeah. They got lied to. Yeah. So they went on to the subway. It's we'll probably take a not look a 45-minute drive either. There's then. LeBron on the subway. <laughs> They're enjoying it. Cal Corver's there. Next to him, they got the nice spot next to the door. So you're not in between two people. Dwayne Wade. <laughs> Everyone's their wearing on. their hoods. Yep. Then there's this guy who's getting filmed gets upset about it. I mean... No, we've, we have now learned this guy's done an interview. <laughs> what? The guy who didn't want to be filmed. Did not know it was LeBron James next to him. Thought it was a college team. He was in his phone. Everyone's in their phone. And they had he said it was on. early on. It was early on in the day. He hadn't okay. had his latte yet, okay. and he didn't want to be filmed. He also said this. So good. LeBron James elbowed him two or three times to let him know. So anyone who's been on the subway is if you have an elbowy person next to you, yeah. it's a problem. Yeah. So like, he stop, actually man. spoke to LeBron James and asked him to yes. stop. And a teammate said, no, it's cool. No, it's cool. Like, in other words, hey, bro. That's the that's the that's dynamic LeBron. of the cast. Can I read way too much into this? It's like if someone else speaks to LeBron, you know like someone else has to get involved and fix there it. Was, there was a minute there where it looked like LeBron was flirting with the Knicks again. You know, like, oh, we got Ooh, yeah. Porzingis. And, right? Look like, oh, Phil's gone. They got a nice team. Ooh, I like what you're doing it looked, here. And, but that guy just ruined it. He did. That yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all his fault. He's like the Bartman of the Knicks. Stop being such a tourist, Cavs. Stop <laughs> filming your rides on the subway. I'm just trying to get to work. Well, films every ride. Like, have you? Do you follow him on IG stories? Of course, he's in the back of a transit with his own logo in there, all and the all time. he does is listen to music. But it's the and same thing over and, and over along. and over. It's like I get it. You don't need to just listen to the same song and show me different sections of the same song, LeBron. Yeah, I but get you it. Know you know the he's words. wagging the dog, right? Like he knows What's that happening? we have to listen because every once in a while there might be like a great subtweet in there. He might be throwing shade at somebody. One of those songs might be like Meek Mill, where he's like saying something about Kyrie. Like he's doing that because he knows we have to watch. I'm always curious why he's in a car. <laughs> with his headphones on listening True. to music. True. It's almost like they should invent something that would pump sound throughout the vehicle that to surround correct. you with it that, that you is don't correct. need to put earbuds in. That is in. not something I would have thought of, but it's a really good point. I know. I know. He Okay, I've seen the car. It's a big van. It's, it's a transit. Yeah, it's like a it. big like carrier van, so it's not just like a car. I'm a minivan enthusiast. That's like, the, that's like a I think jumbo it's more than minivan. a van. It's more than a van. It is. It's like the money team van. Like All right, <laughs> we always say we have to uh, give our listeners a dope pod to step to, so we're not just, we have no radio today. Okay. We've got guests in for Jalen, but we're not just going to mail it in and give you 22 minutes. We're going to do some exclusive podcast content. Ooh. Here we have Ramona Shelburne. <laughs> Joining me in the Jalen and Jacoby studio. Ramona, I'm going to ask you some questions about the National Basketball Association. Let's do it. They're going to be very simple and straightforward. Do I get to ask you questions too? Of course. Okay. Are the Pistons any good? Yes. I think they're good. I think they're like going to make the playoffs and be out in the second round. That's big for them. Ew. Okay. That's, that's progress. Let's play fill in the blank. The Bucks are the blank best team in the Eastern Conference. Uh, Fourth. Fourth. So they're bumping the Raptors or the yeah. Wizards? I think the ice. Okay, I'll bump the Wizards. Yeah. I'll, I'll bump the Wizards. Yeah, I kind of like the Raptors this year, the up and down. Like I, I think they like it's gonna take it's gonna take a little time for them to learn how to play that way. But like uh, you know, I think that I don't know. I like them more. I have more faith in them because the Wizards have been talking a lot, and then when they have these big games, they don't deliver. Mm, and point. I don't like that. Like to me, it's like if you're gonna talk, you better bring it in that game. I'm gonna make a huge generalization yeah. here, but something I have noticed in in decades of sports fandom is yep. sometimes before you get there, you have to get almost there. Yeah, and the Raptors have done their almost there thing. Yeah. So it's not like, oh, here we are in the Eastern Conference mm-hmm. Finals. What an accomplishment. Like, you kind of need to lose a couple to, like, get over the hump. Now, that's a total generalization, cliche yeah. thing to say, like a total radio guy thing to say, but, yeah. like, it is true. It has happened. Oh, I don't think they're getting over the hump. I still think they're, like, third. I think Boston oh, yeah. and Cleveland are going to be in the Eastern Conference Finals this year. Yeah. And the question is whether or not Cleveland is in it right then. They have a bunch of old guys. Like, oh, that's the oldest team in the league. Cleveland's going to be in You think they're going to win it? Yes. You think yeah. they're going to go to the finals again? Yes. I do, too. <laughs>
I'm <laughs> almost positive. Like I'm almost I'm positive. I'm almost positive too. Yeah. Unless somebody gets hurt or if like, you know, LeBron hurts his elbow or his shoulder or something. Like, like that Le- happened his LeBron's last year in Cleveland the last time. Gets hurt. I know, that's true. He could just like get a new Did arm. you see his ankle? I, I was watching that game. He like his ankle hit the ground. <laughs> like and I thought I was like, oh god, like that's that's at least like a week. Yeah, I think you know what I mean. And then, a new ligament and and put then it he in. came back in the game later. <laughs> he was hurt. And it was the same ankle he sprained in training camp. Like that was the. I was like, oh, he's. Do you know what I contribute? I'll attribute all this to. Okay. The yoga bubble workout. If you're not a complete I, NBA I nerd, it. you don't know, know what I'm talking it. about. But he's got these weird little like bubbles that he stands yeah. on before games and does workouts. I think those make your ankles really strong. Yeah, I, yeah but then if, you're str- if your ankle was that strong, it wouldn't like fall, it wouldn't like fold over the way well, it's it did. Not made of steel, yeah. but like it, you're 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 stronger and more pliable okay. in that area. Let me bounce back a little is bit. What yeah. I'm gonna go okay. with. All right, I'll go you know, with you on that. Um, you said the, you're going to the Knicks Lakers game. A couple weeks, yeah. I'm a very die easy Knicks fan. Die easy. Yep. All right. There's a lot to be excited about in New York. <laughs> yep. Do you believe Chris Porzingis can continue this tear? I do. Yeah. I do. I'm a believer in the unicorn. And I even like Hardaway. Like I like I like that little combo they got going. I, I feel good about the Knicks in that they are going finally in a direction that looks like up. Okay. Okay. I don't know that they're really good, but I thought they were tanking this year. Like the way that they came out of the gate. I think they did too. I think they did too. Because it's a really strong draft. And they're like, well, we could use another. If you look at their roster on paper, it doesn't scream like we're making a run at this. (laughs) And like you kind of got the sense, like, oh man, they started off so bad, and like Hornacek's job was kind of in question. And are they playing the right way? Can Porzingis bring it? And then his brothers out there talking like, oh, he's not going to only think about the money and free agency. And I was like, this is not going in the right direction. And it's starting to. Now it seems like they're in a direction that looks like up. I do. Yeah. So I'm not going to talk to you about where LeBron James is playing next year because I, I have a little bit of fatigue on that topic. Oh. And I don't think that he knows it's where he's November, playing. It's also November, yeah. Like, I don't think he knows where he's going, so no. we're all just kind of like yapping. Yeah. But I know you're very connected in Los Angeles, the Lakers organization. Okay. We'll go with that. So let's say what other free agents. Okay. Like, like I think the Lakers roster is going to be completely different next year. Oh, yeah. Right? So like, I think it'll be different by February. Not named LeBron <laughs> James. Yeah. What other players could you see in the purple and gold? I'm not going to hold you to this, but just potentials. I, I don't think anybody has talked nearly enough about the two big centers who are going to be free agents this summer. DeMarcus. DeMarcus and DeAndre Jordan. Ooh, I, for DeAndre, I just feel like he just resigned because of that whole hostage situation. I know. We're still so reliving wow, that. That's already coming up. Right. That was like, a four-year deal after th- with one, yeah, he's got an one option. Year. He can yeah. opt out. They've been trying to talk him into an extension. He doesn't have an agent. They don't want to negotiate with him until he gets himself an agent. It doesn't really behoove him to do it now. No. Because he can make a lot more money by opting out and doing another max deal or something like that. If you don't want to give him the max, what do you do? I think Boogie's he's still... He's not super uh, max uh, qualified. Yeah, DeAndre would be. DeAndre is. Yeah, DeAndre. Now, Boogie, because he is in... Because he's in New Orleans, right? Mm. I don't think he can get that either, right? I think the way those rules work, you had to get it with your own team. But he is... Boogie is the guy that we have to watch really, really carefully because I don't know that that partnership with Brow works like he, and I don't know if he knows if it works. Sure. I think he likes New Orleans. I think it's a good spot for him. It's close to where he grew up. He's got a lot of family in and around. But if you're, there's a lot of people in this league, a lot of players in this league who, especially the guys in the Olympic team who really like and respect mm. Boogie and feel like they could play with him. We have a theory here on Jalen Jacoby oh, no. that Boogie will be the catalyst for the next super team. And we start, remember the question I asked you that started this conversation Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, couldn't you see like a Boogie Paul George? Yeah, I you know? could. I could you see all of that. Boogie Paul George, and then you got Ball, and you know, and, and the, the rest. Look, all you have to do is look at what LeBron James needs to win. So as you get older, you need younger players, right? And you need people who do things that you used to do really well, but now that takes too much out of you, right? So Defense. Defense, Mm -hmm. creating shots, okay? So that's why Kyrie leaving was such a big deal for him because he needed him. He needed him to keep creating shots. They would go to Kyrie at the end of games more than they would go to LeBron LeBron James. LeBron is going to get tired. Like, he is a cyborg. Yes, you're correct. But he's getting older, and you can't just put that on yourself all the time. So that's why he keeps tweeting at Lonzo. That's why he keeps saying nice things. The only thing that LeBron really creator. needs around him, though, that they don't have, mm. shooting. That's like, correct. Brooke Lopez is their best three-point shooter. I'm not kidding. That's not a joke. Yeah, that's, that's true. not a joke. It's not. Like so, like I do like when Brooke Lopez shoots. Yeah, I do too. It, is, but, uh, yeah, it goes in. Yeah, I get and happy. he shoots every time. Like yeah, a green but light. But, yeah, <laughs> but it's like it, it's you know yeah. if, if I mean if we were talking about LeBron not coming here. Is how we started this whole thing. But like it, all yeah. roads do, all NBA roads lead back to LeBron James. But yeah. I agree with you that DeMarcus Cousins. 
being on the Lakers next year is not a stretch. They wanted him last time. It's not a stretch. They tried to go trade for him when he was in Sacramento. Yeah. They're not saying Brooke Lopez is the center of our future with this franchise. Although I think they would, if they don't get like a Demarcus or DeAndre or something like that, if they have the two max spots taken up by the Paul and LeBron sure. or whatever, yeah, whatever it, is, it is, like I think they would resign Brooke because he does do yes. some nice things. Zubac is not the center of the future either. I love Zubac. Don't get me what wrong. What happened to Zubac? He was they don't good play the him. end of last year. He I was know, good. They don't play him. Summer league, he was like all right. But here's yeah. the thing: is like. Luke Wallen knows more about Zubac than I do. Totally you know what I mean? And something tells me that if they, if he was, if he was, I, really if the he guy. was who I think he is, he would be playing. Okay. But the Lakers need to go into full 2010 New York Knicks mode, where everyone just got showcased so you could trade them. Like, mm. And they're not quite there yet. Like, I still think they're trying to win. <laughs> they're not trying to be like, like we're like just going to like get your stats up there. No, they're trying to win. They just can't shoot. Um, and I think, like, you lo- like look at, look at how they're playing right now. They're not, like, Randall's coming off the bench, so, like, He's going to look good because he's playing against second units second all the units, time. Yeah, um, Clarkson looks good. Both those guys, I think, are t- the types that you look to, could to be move. moved because yeah. they have to create enough scabs. Reynolds Reynolds moved. I'm a, he's off the team as far as I'm concerned. I don't think... Okay, if he doesn't get traded, there's a there's a scenario that's really going to suck for him, okay? But he they could wait him out. Like they could wait to see if they get free agents and then they could rescind their qualifying offer. Like he oh, could yeah. get in that spot where like they just make him wait and wait and He'll wait. He'll get picked up somewhere and make millions of dollars. You know, this happened to Shabazz Muhammad. Remember that? Like he didn't end up getting much of a deal. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a tough it's spot Boz for him. now too, by the way. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's changed his name officially. Oh, okay. Yeah. Finally, um, I had a million <laughs> kids this weekend, yep. so I didn't get a lot of chance to watch sports. So I recorded. When you the, say you had a million kids, like I over not, at I your I house, birth, I that... didn't birth them. Okay. No, no, no. My my wife was out of town, so I had th- my three children who were very young. In a and it feels like a lot more when they're yes. under five. Yeah. Yes, it okay. does. So, and then I had this scenario where I recorded the Pacers Rockets game just so I could okay. like at least have a nice ninety minutes yep. of just like sports time before I go to bed. Because the, there was a blowout in the NFL game. So how'd you just pick Pacers Rockets? It was the only late game. Okay, got it. You know, and it, but by the time it's, I can't like watch a day game at night because I know what happened right, on Twitter yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. I was watching this Rockets <laughs> team saying they do not have CP3, who's uh-huh. you know an excellent basketball player, and they look really good. Yeah, you know why they look good? Because they have Luke Umbamute and they have PJ Tucker, and those dudes are strong. And they put yeah. out this lineup <laughs> of of uh, yeah. Tucker, Mute. Uh, Ariza yep. and Capella, and they're like, we don't care if James Strong Harden. And if long. James Harden doesn't play defense, guess what? Everybody else in our uniform does yeah. play defense. Yeah. It was pretty impressive to the point where it led me to ask this question to you: Could they beat the Warriors in a seven-game series? I don't see it. No. Sorry. I think it's hard Still to pick another Warriors. team against I know, the Warriors. Like Let's make this, it, zero to one hundred. What percentage chance would you give them? It's going to be less than fifty. I say fifteen percent. 15. 15%. 15. Yeah. Somebody could get hurt on the Warriors. That's it. 15. That's it. I'm sorry. Oh, that bumps me it. Because to me, like, okay, the Warriors are, and I have to check the stats on this, but last year they were one of the we best teams. We don't check teams. stats on this show. Don't I worry about it. Uh, yeah, I know. Just say stuff. Uh, okay. Yeah, whatever. But last year they, <laughs> they were like, they were one of the strongest teams at defending the three-pointer. What do the Rockets do really well? Shoot the three. Mm. So the Warriors defend what the Rockets do the best and when you take that away from them then James Harden has to do a lot of dribbling and I know they got Chris Paul to do some of the dribbling too but like I just think how do they win if you take away your, their best weapon I just yeah it's yes or no question does Chris Paul mm. play on the same team as LeBron James next year no no why not he I don't think they money? want to play together I think that they're friends, and that need, that's all it needs to be. Oh, like you don't the same way you don't want to like move in with your friends. It's yeah, like you don't want to like, ruin well, that friendship. Like, I don't think their so games it's, it's, go together. Like I, I don't see it. Like I, you know, like yeah. there's been a LeBron lot and of Derrick Rose's game don't go together. No, but he was a little desperate. Okay, like I really <laughs> left. There wasn't no one. There was no one out there at that point. Okay, but like, and I don't think like Chris was already off the board at that point. Sure. Uh, you know, Dwayne didn't really have a job. Chris I also mean, wanted to get paid at that point. That's not something. That can yeah, he didn't make that. Yeah. I mean, he he gets a chance to make money, but I don't know that Chris is. Getting a, a big deal next year. I think he left a lot of money on, on the table. His performance, but right, right now, I mean, yeah. To me, Chris Paul made a huge, huge financial sacrifice and risk yes. in his move to Houston, and he did that because he recognizes to be one of the all-time greats, which he already is. You have to win, and you have to be seen as doing everything in your po- in your power to do that. Um, it remains to be seen whether that team has enough to win. I, I don't. I think they did the right thing. I think that they have the right construction and like what you say is correct. They have they're long and they're good and they won on opening night and all that. But I just don't see anybody beating the Warriors unless somebody gets hurt. Well, I'm gonna eat my words. I know it. 
You, you just set me up like you're going to play that back. Don't worry. No, they they never record this show. No. Yeah. And all the, the staff just they don't even There's listen. There's like a clip of me on They're Around the Horn saying, right now. Yeah. Chris Paul will not leave $200 million <laughs> on the table. Of course, He's of course. the head of the Players Association, and he didn't negotiate that deal. Here's how it works on this then, show. Oops. If you're right, <laughs> oh, we'll play the clip. Got it. If you're wrong, got it. media, media got nah. corrupted. Media okay. got corrupted. Got we don't it. have it. Okay. Thank you so much for coming through. It's been a lot of fun. All of our podcast listeners will be back tomorrow, as we always are, and I believe we might even have Jalen Anthony Rose. Woo!